In this video, we're going to see a new feature of .NET 7, and that is Output Cache. As you may know, with cache we can have data that is faster to read, at least faster than a database. So what we're going to do is that we're going to see a simple example of storing data using Output Cache, and also we're going to learn how to invalidate or evict that cache manually. So first, let's see that we have this application. This is a really simple web API SP.NET Core application. As you can see, we have a people controller and we have here two endpoints, get and post, and we're using entity framework core. So let's see that this application works. Let's press control F5. And by the way, you can find the code of this demo in the description of this video. So as you can see here, we have get and post. I can do a get. You are going to see that we have an empty database, as you can see here. And also if I go to post, you can see that I can add myself, for example, execute and we have 200 OK. And if we come back here and we say execute again, we have Felipe. So this application is working. Now let's pretend that this operation that we have here is a slow. Let me put here await task delay two seconds. And we're going to see that now this will take two seconds to execute. So let's come back here, try it out, execute. And you can see that we have to wait two full seconds before having our answer displayed in the screen. And if I execute again, we have to wait another two seconds. This is very inefficient. We don't really need to be accessing the database to get this data if we know that this data doesn't change a lot. It would be more efficient to have that data in cache. So let's do that. Let's come back here and first let's configure output cache in ASP.NET Core. So let's go to the Solution Explorer, let's go to the program class, and in here, before this bar app equal to builder build, let me put builder services at output cache. And then here, before this use HTTPS redirection, you can say app use output cache. Now, we're still not using output cache. We have only configured it in our application. Now let's use it. So let's come back to the people controller. And in here, I can use an attribute and say output cache. And I can use the duration parameter to indicate how many seconds I want the data to be stored in cache. So for example, just as a simple example, I will choose five seconds. So control F5 one more time to rebuild our application. Let's come back here and let's say, try it out. The first time that we execute this, we're going to see that it will take about two seconds to load the data, as you can see here. But after that, as you can see, I'm quickly clicking on the execute button and we got this response back several times. But since five seconds has already passed, if I execute one more time, you're going to see that we have to wait two full seconds again. But again, since the data is in cache one more time, then this is faster. Now we have a problem. What happens if we create a new person and then immediately execute our get. As you may imagine, that person that was just created will not be here in this response until after the cache has expired. That is not ideal because the user may think that they inserted some data, but the data is not being shown in this get, which may mean that the application has an error. But there is no error, it is just that the cache has not been refreshed. So what we're going to do is that we're going to refresh the cache manually. So first what I want to do is to show you the error. So let's come here. I will put 30 here just to have more time. Control F5. I just want you to visualize the error. So let's say get, try it out, execute. You are going to see that we have Felipe here. And of course the cache is working as you can see. Now let me create a new person. Someone like Claudia is fine, execute. Now, if I come back here to the get, you can see that we still don't have Claudia. We still don't have Claudia because this data is coming from cache, but Claudia is on the database. So what we have to do is to manually refresh the cache so that in a subsequent HTTP request, we get back Claudia. So let's do that. Let's come back here. And what we're going to do is that we have to go to the program class because we have to use a tag. A tag is just a way to put a name into the data in the cache. So for example, let me say here, options, options, 
add policy, I have to add a policy. A policy is just a set of rules, in this case for a cache. So let me say here, people policy, I can have different policies, for example, for different entities in my application. Now let's say builder, builder, expire. I need to set the expiration time, which is the same as this duration that I have here. So I can use the same time. I can say time span from seconds 30. Again, this is just an example. In real life, you may have a bigger value for the cache. In this case, 30 is just fine. Now the tag, which is the name, quote unquote, name of the data. I can just say people, for example, that is fine. Semicolon here. Now I will use this people policy here. Instead of duration, I will say policy name. Now the idea is that now, since this data, since this data will have a name assigned to it, people, I can use this people name to refresh that data. Let's see that. Let's come here and I have to use a service. I output cache store, I'll assign it as a field. And then here in post after the save changes, I will say await output cache store and I will use a bit by tag async. And here I have to pass the name of the tag, which is people, which is this people that we have here. And then after that, I have to pass the cancellation token. In our case, we're not using any cancellation tokens. So I just have to say default here, semicolon here. And that's actually it. With this line of code, I'm refreshing this cache that I'm defining here because it has this tag here. Let's see that. Let's see that this works. Control F5 to run our application one more time. And we're going to repeat the same scenario. So let's come back here. I'll do a get first. And as you can see here, we will have Felipe and Gloria. Then after that, I will create a new person. I'll name it Robert, execute. We have Robert. And now if we come here, since we invalidate that cache, then now we have Robert here. And after that, if I re-execute this, you can see that we are using cache. As you can see, the response comes very, very fast. So as you can see, we're using output cache in a very efficient manner because now our users doesn't necessarily have to touch the database in order to get its data. And they are getting that data way faster now because of the output cache. If you want to learn more about .NET, buy my Udemy course today. I have courses on C Sharp, SP.NET Core and Angular, SP.NET Core and React and more. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.